output. All right, hi and welcome. This is Vicki Draper, author, healer, and animal communicator with healingyouranimal.com. And today I have client Dr. Deanna Holman with me, whose dog Ranger had some big significant shifts with our work. And she is here to share her experience. So hi, Dr. Deanna, welcome and thank you for being here. Hi, hi Vicki, thank you for having me. And so tell us a little bit about Ranger and you know how, how he was and why you came to me in the first place to get help. So Ranger is 10 now, he was nine um, when I connected with Vicki. And for the entire time I've had him, I've had him since he was a puppy. And for the entire time I've had him, he's been very, very clingy and he has had issues with peeing in the house. Um, he is like potty trained, but you know, if I was gone for a long time, he'd pee in the house. Or if he was, seemed like if he was upset with us or mad, I always thought it was because he had kind of like an attitude problem. Um, he would pee in the house and he was also very clingy, like always wherever I was tripping over him because he was very, very clingy. And last year, um, we had a lot of change. We moved twice in a very short period of time. I got married. We left Ranger um, with a dog sitter when we went away for our honeymoon. There was just like a lot of, um, of instability in our lives. And Ranger, who also picks up on my energy and also just was feeling his own instability. Everything really got amplified to an extent that um, it was unmanageable and I didn't know what to do. I was worried about his health because his, his skin was acting up and he wasn't, um, he definitely didn't seem well. And, you know, he's a French bulldog and he was, you know, almost 10 years old at this point. And I, you know, love him so much. And I was very worried that he was like sick and like just, you know, possibly even dying. And he was peeing in the house daily daily. I mean, and we just moved into this new place and it's white carpets. And so obviously there was the stress of that. Um, and we just didn't know what to do. And I feel like I manifested Vicky because I had said like a week before that, um, that I needed to find a good animal intuitive and Vicky just kind of got presented like, um, in my path, right. I didn't go looking. I, I found her, but I was, you know, I manifested her. So I felt really called to connect with Vicky and um, we did an, the initial, we did three sessions to begin with. And um, after the first session, this was last October, um, he, Ranger effectively stopped peeing in the house. Um, I'd say in the last year, because it's been about a year, you know, there's been maybe four accidents, right? And those were maybe four, four or five, and they, but those were all, you know, we forgot to let him out and he peed by the front door or, you know, things like that. Not this like emotional reactive, like urinating that was happening daily. And again, five times in a year <laughs> versus five times, five, to seven times in a week. So huge, huge, huge difference. It's just not an issue. We used to have to crate him when we left because if we didn't crate him, he would pee. Um, and now we, we took a while to stop creating him. We were like a little bit nervous, but we haven't been creating him for, for several months now. Um, and he's fine. Uh, so that was the first huge shift. And obviously that was a big, big deal. Um, so that first session, I feel like was really focused on Ranger's emotional state. Cause what Vicky, um, pointed out is, is it wasn't so much that he was like acting out cause he was mad at us. It was separation anxiety it was anxiety it was an anxiety response and so that's also why the because it wasn't every day before we moved into this house and before all the instability happened but it was very regularly it was several times a week um but it had gotten worse and it was because of like that instability and the separation anxiety and so she worked on him his emotions a lot of that and i immediately started also noticing not just that he wasn't peeing in the house but he was less clingy you know, he was more, I wasn't tripping over him. He was still, you know, wanted to be around me a lot and like greeted me when I got home and, and, um, but he wasn't 
clingy to the, and like the, the energy around the clinginess, it was like a desperation. That's what it kind of always had. It was like, how could you have stepped out of the room, right? Like, how could you have abandoned me? It was very dramatic. And so even though he was still kind of, you know, following me around, it wasn't that energy. And so the second session with, um, we had, we focused more on his physical issues. We still did some of the emotional things, but we focused more on his physical issues because Ranger had, um, a lot of sores. He's a French bulldog. They're prone to a lot of skin issues and, um, and licking. So after we, like he was licking his paws, like constantly, constantly. And so I was worried about his paws. Um, and so I told Vicky and, you know, this was all via zoom. She could see Ranger, but she couldn't, you know, he was on my lap. Oh, that's another thing to note. That was really incredible. Like this dog, who's like the most ADD active dog in the world, like running around, not really ever sitting still for the entirety of the time Vicky was working on him. He was just standing on my lap in the desk chair. Couldn't have even been that comfortable position, but he like wasn't moving and you could tell he was feeling the energy. There is no doubt that that's what was happening. Cause you could just like, you could just see how he was standing and how he was that he was receiving the energy. So once we started working on his physical body, he jumped off of my lap. That was the first time he moved. He jumped off of my lap and we started talking about his paws and that he was licking his paws a lot. And so Vicky says, she's like, well, I feel like the, the left paw's okay. Feels more like it's the right paw. Um, and it's really the middle two digits, not the outer two digits. And I don't know, I would just see him licking, right? So I actually didn't know. So I went down to see, and sure enough, the two digits that Vicky had described, intuited, were the only two digits that were actually wet, right? So that was obviously was bothering him. And so then I was like, well, that seems to be true. And I was like, but on his left elbow, there's a sore, right? There was like an open shoe. was like, okay, let me feel into that. And she felt into that. She's like, oh, yes. And that goes up into his armpit. And I went and I looked and sure enough, he had this big rash under his arm that I hadn't noticed previously. So she obviously felt that. So she did some work on that. You could tell he was like feeling that. But then I was like, I'm also worried about his right ankle and because it's been swollen. And I didn't say this part, but his ankle had been swollen for like a month. He didn't seem like he was guarding it or nursing it or, um, limping on it. Didn't seem like it was bothering him, but it was notably swollen. But all I said to Vicky was that his right ankle seemed to be swollen. And she was like, let me feel into that. Oh yeah. There's a lot of heat there. Feels like there's like, you know, but it doesn't feel like it's in the joint. It doesn't feel like it's the muscle. It doesn't feel like it's bothering him, but there's definitely a lot of bound energy there. And I thought that was really remarkable because I hadn't mentioned that it wasn't bothering him. I just said that it was swollen and sure enough, she also intuited that. And so she's like, well, let me start working on that. The second she started working on that, Ranger started licking that foot. Like, so obviously he was feeling something and the next day the swelling went down and it didn't come back. So here's the emotional side of things. And then the physical side of the things all being addressed with these two sessions, very like noticeably. Um, and then what happened after the second session is that Ranger became so independent. So he stopped greeting me when I got home. I mean, he was happy to see me. You know, it's not that he, well, he stopped greeting me when I came home. He wasn't always cuddling me. He wasn't following me around anymore. You know, I'd come into the room and whereas before he would be like, where have you been? Where have you been? He'd just be like, Hey, and then like go back down and sleep. You know, he'd be in my husband's office when I got home, just like perfectly content. And like, I started getting a complex. He was, it was such a shift. I was so used to for nine years, this dog and I'm probably, I'm quite codependent as well. So he probably picked up on a lot of my energy. And so I was just so used to this, even though it was kind of annoying, I was so used to it that by the third session, I was like, I feel like Ranger doesn't love me anymore. And so Vicky was like, that's not true. He loves you, but he's really enjoying his newfound independence. So Vicky even went so far as to actually work on me and what was was going on in my body and my being that felt like I couldn't let go because it was interesting. I forgot to say there's one week between the first two sessions and two weeks between the second and third session. So that first week, Ranger was really super independent and I started to get kind of a complex about it. And so he he slowly started, not all the way, but he started kind of coming back to being a little bit more like needy. 
And I realized he was picking up on my energy because that's what our pets do. And like he was being needy, not because he was needy, but because like I needed him to be needy, which I didn't want. I wanted him to be independent, but I had some stuff I obviously had to work through. So Vicky took some time in that third session to work on me as well as working on Ranger. And ever since then, it's been perfect, like a perfect balance. Um, he's there when I want him, but I don't, he doesn't need to be, he's still very, very, very happy being, um, independent and, uh, yeah, but he's also still very loving and, and it's, it's really, and I feel good about it because I know that he's happy. And I know the reason why he's can do that is because he is secure in himself and he's not feeling that anxiety. Um, and yeah, I've worked with Vicky since then. And, and we haven't, there hasn't been anything super like pressing now because he's been so good since those first three sessions. So we've done some, you know, check-ins and, and tune-ups. And sometimes when we go out of town, we, cause we make sure that um, he's situated by working with Vicky. So it's definitely, um, we love having Vicky as a resource, especially cause he's an older dog. And so I want to, you know, keep him as healthy and happy as possible. Um, and well, of course, like we do have a great vet. Um, we see a holistic vet and, and he, she takes good care of him, but you know, there's only so much a vet can do, right. Cause sometimes it's, it's deeper than that. And, um, and not everyone has a good attentive vet like I do. And sometimes, you know, uh, a lot of things get overlooked, right. But especially, you know, the, the energetic and emotional side of things, because that's so important to not just their emotional well-being, but it really has a huge, plays a huge role in their physical well-being. And so if you're not treating that emotional and energetic body, then the dog, then your dog or cat or, you know, precious pet uh, can't always fully heal. So that is, that's our story. We still use her. She has these amazing sprays that we use on Ranger every day. And to speak to these sprays, like this one is is clear and this one's an Icelandic Iceland spar and this is protection and to speaking um to speak to the sprays this dog does not like to be sprayed with anything he does not like to get wet in any way if I've ever tried to spray him with anything before he freaks out or he runs away and it's just it doesn't and not only does he not freak out or run away when he sees these spray bottles come out he does he like waits for them and so he, and then sometimes after that, he'll run around because he's like feeling the energy and stuff. Although they think the more that he's gotten used to them, he doesn't do that at the beginning, he would do that. Um, but he, so you can definitely tell that he's feeling something, but also he like wants to be sprayed with these things. And I've tested it out and like, well, let's see, now that he doesn't mind getting sprayed, let's see if I spray him with this thing. He does not like it. It's that specifically Vicky's sprays because of the energy in the essences. And so- um, they're very nourishing to him and I use them too. I use the sprays on myself too. So that is my story. Great. Do it. Yeah, I know. And so excited that, um, that I was able to support the two of you and just having this transformation, having this new quality of life and, um, that Ranger is feeling so much better. That's He's feeling so much better. Yeah. yeah. Is he where you can pick him up? Or yeah, I was gonna say, let's. This is oh. there he is. My little He's Ranger. Yeah. And Grandpa Dog Ranger. Since people were hearing about him, they now get to see him. He was just sleeping, so he's yeah. Sleeping. There Thank you, is. Ranger, for just for for disturbing your nap and coming to join us a minute. <laughs> we appreciate it. So that's my baby. All righty. Well, thank you for connecting and sharing your story. And um, yeah, just like I said, I'm grateful to be able to have um, been part of helping change your guys' lives. Well, we are so happy to have you and to know you, Vicki. Thank you so much. All right. Um, so this is Vicki Draper with Healing Your Animal, um, healingyouranimal.com, and bringing a great ranger story to you today. Uh, see you next time.